Well, good day and good news. Uh, one of my YouTube subscribers found a schematic for this uh, GE radio. It's kind of interesting because it's uh, it looks like it came out of an actual. Um, where did that go? I'm uh, missing a piece here. Hang on. We're back. It looks like it came out of an actual GE, um, like a book or something. Here it says uh, General Electric Radio Service Guide 1946 to 56, so there's 10 years. What's nice about this is it actually has um, it actually has a parts list on it, which is great. And it's kind of funny. There's some actual there's like pricing for things, and there's prices for the uh, you know here apparently you can get a grill cloth, and apparently this is interesting. Mine is the, uh, here is a valuable clue. There are different model numbers. This, this chassis may be for these different cases. And, uh, top my, uh, tip my hat to, uh, my ham shack. Uh, if you get a chance, I'll put a link there on this video. Uh, uh, he has a YouTube channel with some very interesting little tidbits and stuff on it. He does a lot of uh, amateur radio and a lot of shortwave listening. He's um, one of the subscribers. We kind of have a little group of people. The lesson learned here is it pays to have associates with similar interests, or maybe not similar interests, but it pays to have some associates. This is kind of an extension of what you know I was talking about maybe a few videos ago about... Uh, that I get together with some friends every Friday and uh, we share uh, information and uh, also hospital costs you bang your foot anyway it pays to have a network of people um, because they they turn into like a thousand eyes and uh, this is a perfect example you know I, I looked around found originally um, this blobby schematic which remember we, we looked at this and made some assumptions about some things and remember we said that that was the probably the clock radio guts and that's exactly what it is there's the uh, the tube and here's a better look at that audio transformer yeah it is tapped why this looks all yellowy I don't know I don't know and uh, yeah, remember we made an assumption that this resistor, or I made an assumption that was the uh, uh, resistor, the 2.2 meg in the AVC circuit. And that's exactly what that is. But it's still good to have the schematic, and it's still good to have a network of uh, people that want to have similar interests and want to help you. That's great. Again, thanks again. Um, the parts list is highly valuable. Because if you can't read the value of something on here, it might uh, might help you determine something. That's funny. You can buy a line cord. Apparently, you can buy an ivory line cord. So, do they have the clock for sale? Because I've been doing a little work on this, and this is I'm a few videos down. Um, well, you can get a socket for thirty cents. Weird. The socket for V1 is different than the rest. No. The socket for V1 and V2 are different. And then V3, 4, or 5 is different also. So there are three different sockets in there. Well, that's interesting. You learn a lot of little tidbits. Uh, there's a plug, an tra audio transformer, an oscillator coil. There's the IF transformer. A resistor was 13 cents. Hmm. Uh, let's see. That electrolytic cap was two dollars. A pointer, a grommet, a spacer, a shield, a clip, a spring. Uh, the loop on the back that uh, this this back and the antenna was a buck seventy. It's very interesting how how much pricing is changing. You get a loudspeaker. Wow, a loudspeaker was expensive. Holy zigzag! That clock was expensive. Fifteen fifty. That's this assembly, the whole assembly. Wow, that's a lot in, uh, you know, probably 1950s dollars. 
This must have been an expensive radio. And there's some other, you know, we can get a volume control for about a buck. The tuning condenser was three something. So what's the most next most expensive part? Loudspeaker, four bucks, four dollars thirty. Clock assembly, sixty cycle lens, bezel, and crystal, fifteen fifty. That's really cool. So that'll speed us on our way. And again, there's some uh, service notes down here. They're very small. Um, all the values of the resistor are, are in Lint. All the values of the capacitors are in picofarad unless noted. All the values of the resistors are in K or megohm. Socket connections. Number eight is a dummy pin. Small hole in the tube socket between the pins. All the DC voltages are measured at 117 volts AC with a... 2,000, what is that? Oh, a two, a 20k ohm per volt voltmeter. So that'd be something like a Simpson, a, a Simpson 260. And there's some voltages on there. Oh, okay, one of the caps are replaced. Remember, that was that line filter cap. And it won't focus, there it is. That's interesting. I don't think that resistor was 18 ohms. I think it was 22 ohms. It might have been a repair. That's interesting. Remember we replaced that. Um, we replaced that cap. That's not the value. I had 0 .047. It won't hurt anything. It's just a t kind of a tone control. Hmm. Okay. So C9 was one of those hybrid capacitor modules. Where's that at? Yeah, C there it is, C9. 90 cents. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. There's four caps in there. Okay. Very interesting. Again, many thanks. <laughs> now I owe him one. Ruts. <laughs> Maybe it's a draw, I don't know. Cool. This is interesting to me too. Um, this obviously was some sort of service manual that GE put out. I might have to do some snooping and see if I can find this. Anyway, I'll put a link down below so the uh, rest of the uh, folks that are watching this, uh, it's a link to his website where he stored that PDF. This is in a PDF form. PDF is a pretty standard form for uh, documents and schematics. There is a uh, another form, a format. It's uh, they call the déjà vu format. It's kind of obscure a little bit, and it's fallen out of favor. I've got a few documents in the déjà vu format, and I looked just the other day to converting them, and I found something that will convert them. But I'm not going to pay thirty bucks. I'll just keep using it. Someday it'll bite me. And uh, but that's uh, I don't know. One of the reasons. So again, lesson learned here is it pays to have friends in high places or whatever, you know. Okie dokie. Well, so this speeds us on our way. This bears looking into. So, have any questions or comments? Thanks a million. Um, again, uh, appreciate if you pop by his web, his uh, YouTube page, which is my ham shack. It's all one word. He has uh, about 150 videos. He has quite a few videos about listening to shortwave. They're, uh, they're little uh, short, like five and ten minute snippets of uh, different uh, um, shortwave catches that he's had over the year. Some of them are pretty interesting. And there's some other interesting tidbits on there too. He, uh, is uh, interested in amateur radio, so some amateur radio things, and uh, he has some interesting um, videos on a homemade uh, regenerative receiver that he built, which uh, it looks like a really excellent little receiver. Um, there are some other videos, kind of tutorial videos that have been uh, uh, republished, some kind of old knowledge that's <clears throat> trying to get lost to the universe, so he went out of his way to kind of save it and resurrect it and bring it back. Um, there's a interesting transistor 
um, tutorial. I think it's about four, five, or six parts, and it's very interesting. And I believe that was from, I want to say, Techtronics. Anyway, it was an expensive video series. I remember one of the places I worked, we actually had that, a U-Matic, three-quarter inch U-Matic tape. And uh, it's like somebody's taken the time to kind of resurrect it, bring it back to life. The video is uh, not so hot, but you know what? You don't need the video to be not so hot. You need the audio, or is it the audio that's not so hot? I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched it. I need to go back and watch it. But that's okay. So there you go. Have a groovy day. Take her easy.